New Prague has been a community of art for over 100 years. Its commitment to the arts is apparent in its architecture, culture, food, music, and visual arts. New Prague has historically held visual arts in high esteem and supported several murals throughout town over the past century. These murals reflect the values of the community, such as the music, the harvest, and the Czech heritage of early settlers. In recent years, the visual arts events have highlighted only the local student population. Inspire was created to bring more art and more art learning opportunities to the community at all age levels. Through the generous support of the Metropolitan Regional Arts Council, New Prague Area Community Education was able to implement a mural project which created a hands-on activity for residents of all ages. Since the program's completion, New Prague now enjoys three large murals to be mounted on canvas, to be hung in the Community Education Building where residents of all ages can enjoy the murals for many years to come. Amy Ike at New Prague Area Schools Community Education was the director of this project. Well, this project was uh, funded through a grant from the Metropolitan Regional Arts Council in their Arts Learning Program. And the idea behind Arts Learning is to connect the world of the arts with community learning and really to bring the two together. And this project allowed us to bring uh, preschoolers, school-agers, teens, adults, and senior adults all together with the arts. They were able to participate as well as learn from Greg Prislichka, a professional mural artist and educator, was hired to inspire participants to take a new look at murals and also to help create a unique mural with hands-on participation from the initial brainstorming stage of the project through the final painting. New Prague Community Education kicked off the project with a mural tour and reflection of the historical murals already present in the community. The mural tour information was gathered with the help of the New Prague Library, Historical Society, and the Chamber of Commerce. The teachers in the community education also prepared the students by reviewing with the students a set of books, both on painting and murals, as well as artists. The theme of these murals is how we learn and was chosen to reflect the mission of the schools and to show its commitment to lifelong learning. Each group engaged in a brainstorming session to come up with images for a mural that would reflect how we as humans learn. Each group generated ideas that were unique to their level of development. I wanted to have a kind of a structure, an underlying structure that would uh, be the base for them to paint into, uh, yet allow them to have some freedom uh, to, um, to create what they wanted. Uh, so what I did uh, is I, I created the design as a, as a basic um, line, outline kind of shell uh, and, uh, with different areas that got trapped in between the different symbols. And then within those, um, the students were allowed to paint. I, first I started by um, at first I started with the preschool students uh, coming in giving a presentation about uh, uh, mural painting and what, I, and what I do the process to kind of give them uh, to give them an understanding of what they were doing on a, on a little bit of a smaller scale. Uh, they had already uh, gone to the community and viewed the murals and talked about their significance. So uh, my, for me then I was, to, I was showing them here's, here's kind of how it, 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 it's done going from a small uh, small uh, sketch or concept to a big to a big project. The first mural completed was done with the preschoolers. Greg and the children talked about ways they learn. Greg included these images into the design. Preschoolers learn by what they see through touch and what they hear. They learn with music and songs and through play. They also learn through guidance and by learning their letters and through drawing. These images came together to create a pleasing visual design for the preschoolers to paint.
The second mural was done with elementary school age children. They discussed with Greg ways in which they learn, including building things, games, by asking questions, and playing sports. They learn through reading and are motivated to learn by rewards. They learn through repetition and through the use of technology, writing, and by discovery. Um, as in somewhat contrast from the preschool mural, this one you can start to see where the, the children, because they have more control of what their uh, of their motor skills, uh, they started uh, looking at different patterns and and how they could use that color family they had, like in here with the greens, uh, to what they could do with that as far as stripes or or kind of squiggled around or abstract patterns. Um, so they were thinking more about that and had more control on that and were able to to use that brush better uh, and really kind of think about it. So it added a whole other dimension. The last mural was painted with adults and young adults. It represents ways in which adults learn. They learn from interaction with other people, by reading the news and through higher education. They learn from other cultures and through travel. They have learned from the paths they have chosen, and they learn from the communities they live in, as well as through the time spent here on Earth. As far as the style now here, even the next step, you can see even greater control. Uh, with uh, different, more uh, controlled patterns and, and textures and gradations and, and symbols within. Again, they were given a color family, so either reds and pinks or purples or yellows, um, and they were allowed to do what they wish. So. Um, each creating their own little piece part of a big hole and, and the fun thing about uh, the way I structured this was that they could um, they could each create their own piece individually but be part of a whole and create something that they couldn't do individually it was very it, it really shows uh, the cooperation and, and many hands working together to create something because uh, their little piece is one piece and, and and beautiful in itself, but together with all the rest, it makes something so, so unique that uh, that um, only this number of people could create. And that together, and with the three of them together, I think shows a great progression and, and uh, uh, uniqueness. We've hung these paintings in the community education office where people come and go for their lifelong learning opportunities. Everyone from babies and preschoolers who come for early childhood and preschool classes all the way through school agers and teens and adults and senior adults. This is a pathway for so many people to come and begin or continue their learning and the people that have come through since we hung these paintings have just been amazed at the beauty of the paintings as well as all the individual creativity that you see each artist contributed to the overall design of the paintings. It's, uh, it's generating a lot of conversation about the pieces and about the arts in general and about the concept of people being able to participate in the art. 
Inspire was created with three goals in mind, to introduce learners of all ages to a professional artist and educator who can share a unique visual arts process of mural painting. Two, to establish or expand on learners' appreciation for the murals already in the new Prague public space. And three, involve learners in the act of creating a new mural by lending their conceptual ideas and their individual designs to the art world. Artist Greg Preslichka was hired to work with the second graders at Grainwood Elementary School, along with several community members, to create a beautiful mural for their media center. The first step was to come up with the setting, character, and series of events. The participants each received a card which asked them to provide an answer to a part of the story. Each class created their own series of events and characters. The images were meant to help the viewer create their own story. going to get a card uh, that's going to have either it's going to say setting or character on it and that's going to help us generate a list of characters and settings that like this mural is kind of going to be I like to call it kind of a story wall. We don't want to tell the whole story. We want to just tell, kind of set the stage, tell them some pieces to it so that when people come in here each time they see it they might see a little different part or make up their own story. Then I, then I make, come up with bookmarks, and then you guys are going to decide, actually the whole school is going to decide. 
decide on which one for the three different classes gets painted up on the wall up here. During step two, students were invited to the media center to review the layouts Greg created. At this meeting, Greg explained his process for creating a mural and gave a demonstration on how he creates a large image from a small sketch. step was open to all students and staff at Grainwood. Greg created one bookmark design for each of the three layouts. The bookmarks displayed a small portion of the mural. Students were able to view the full layouts before voting. Students chose the bookmark with the design they wanted to see painted on the media center walls. Which ones did you guys vote for? I voted for number one. I voted for our class, which was number one. step was when Greg painted the mural in the media center. Again, the whole school was able to participate in this step by visiting the media center and asking Greg questions about the project, the layout, and about his job as a mural artist. Students enjoyed watching the mural come together. So uh, we're working on a mural here at I.J. Holton uh, Intermediate School. Um, I've kind of work, been working with the kids for uh, a couple of weeks on the idea and uh, uh, I started painting earlier this week and the kids are, are also painting part of it with me. The mural is a culmination of um, their ideas being brainstormed um, about what 
program means to them and the impact that Peer Power Partners has had on the school and also what they consider the impact has been on our community. So I met with the uh, uh, Peer Power Partners group uh, here at IJ Holton and uh, we first, first meeting we talked about kind of their, their group and uh, what it was and kind of they got they kind of familiarized me with the group and, and gave me some information. We had some brainstorming about uh, just different concepts for the mural and just words and that that represented their group. Peer Power Partners is a mentoring program that pairs students with special needs or disabilities with typically developing same age peers. And then I took those the, those concepts and all those words and that and took them back to my studio and worked up some uh, layouts. So I, I created three different designs that we then brought back to the students, uh, presented it to the Peer Power Partners group again, uh, and then also that went out to the school where the school voted on the three and, and chose one of those three. I gave a background on how we develop some mural and what thought goes into it. Um, and then he probed the students to find out what they, their ideas were about being in Peer Power Partners, what impact it had on them and what it meant to them. This mural concept is, uh, it shows a beacon uh, and it's kind of represents the, 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 that these kids are kind of a beacon to the other kids in the school and the community. And it also, what we were trying to communicate on a larger perspective was the importance of social, emotional literacy and education as a key component of ed education. The Peer Power Partners kids have paired up in groups and they're painting stars. So I'm doing the main part of the mural, but then the kids are, uh, they're getting to paint a little portion of their own. So we came up with an overall concept together, but now the kids get to put their own little mark on it. It's been a, a very successful project thus far, um, gaining a lot of interest. Um, one thing I think is extremely important is that the muralist uh, was interviewed by the newspaper earlier today and he on his own, unsolicited, said one of the best things about the project was he's been able to see the groups of students when they come to paint their particular star on the wall, that he's been able to see them hands-on working together and supporting each other and encouraging someone to do something that's a little bit out of their comfort zone which is the whole mission of the program to begin with. Doing the mural has provided an opportunity for the kids to have hands-on action living the mission. Tonight, a dedication ceremony for a mural at Austin's I.J. Holton Intermediate School. The Be a Beacon mural includes different images promoting inclusion, tolerance, and kindness. It took artist Greg Preslichka around two weeks to paint this with help from students. And it was that help from picking the final design to putting their own artistic style onto the wall that made this project so special. Doing murals is a, is a public art form, so the fact that people can see it happen is kind of a special thing about it. Most art people go see in a gallery is just there and they don't really see the process, so uh, I really enjoy the fact that they can see how it kind of starts, comes from start to finish. Yeah, really neat idea there. Take a look at that. Many of the students who worked on this wall are part of the Peer Powers Partners program, which is pairing students with special needs to their peers to promote friendships and understanding. Hi there, I'm Tad Johnson, Managing Editor of This Week Newspapers. Today we're at the Minnesota Valley YMCA in Burnsville, where we're taking a look at Greg Presica and a little bit of his mural paintings that he's been doing here in the uh, children's playroom. Uh, he's been working on this particular project here for the past two days, and I think the results are uh, quite stunning as you can see. I, I roughly sketch out everything um, to see how the placement and everything, and then start putting in the broad the broad colors uh, and refining things as I'm going and kind of looking to how the colors work throughout and, and, um, and, and flow so that the eye is, is kind of working its way around the whole room. So there's going to be a lot of things kind of hidden in here and, and unique stuff that, uh, that you can find as you come in here. So hopefully each time you come in there's a, a different, somewhat of a different um, experience for you. Yep. There are a lot of people who say they're inspired by their surroundings. And that's why a local artist is helping students do just that. It's all happening at the Barack and Michelle Obama School in St. Paul. 
Greg Prislicka is painting a mural with a science theme as part of a makeover. He wants the kids to have a oh, feeling of nice. curiosity and wonder when they're in the classroom. The inquiry room will be used for hands-on science experiments. It's very pretty. Greg. Yeah, that's cool. And how painting his kid's bedroom, look at this, turned into a side business. Meet this guy who makes amazing wall murals in schools and community centers all over the cities. Wow. Plus, take a look at this. Emily is getting the backstory on the guy who paints big pictures. He takes a boring plain wall and completely recreates it into unique masterpieces. We'll meet the guy behind it next. Well, now we're going to get inspired by paint. You know, paint can do wonders for a wall. But we're going to meet a dad from Savage who does more than just paint. He creates these wall murals. Oh, I'm amazed cool. by people who do this. They're eye-catching, and they can transform a plain space into a story. Yeah, I don't have that talent, I so I need that. someone who does. Well, well, we'll meet this guy. Emily is introducing us to the guy behind the big picture murals. It's something many parents do. They take on the challenge of painting their kids' room. They've been bugging me for years to paint their room, so I finally got time uh, one summer. But for Greg, he did more than just paint the rooms. He created a sort of oasis through murals, and then it turned into something more. My wife Heidi said, maybe we could do this as a side thing. And so we started out doing residential stuff. Uh, and then got connected with doing a YMCA, a really large project. I uh, hadn't done anything that large. It was kind of scary, but that kind of started it. Before I, I was doing it, I was getting real nervous, thinking how, you know, I've never done anything this big, because it was room that was 40 feet by 20 feet. Uh, so I, if you come to my house in my garage, you'll see there's, hu there's a huge palm tree with monkeys and that swinging. Oh, that's what practice? I practice, yeah. I thought, I got to try this, get painting on a ladder and see how that works. Before long, Greg was transforming plain walls into creative masterpieces in other YMCA's, businesses, and schools. Like this one that we watched him work on here at Prairie View Elementary in Eden Prairie. The idea was, was yeah, it's the eagle, so they, the, that's the mascot, so, and it's a library and it's to encourage reading and that, so I tried to put that to, together somehow. And then as far as making the eagles, I want them to look a little bit realistic, but not too much. They're, they're for kids here, so we didn't want them threatening looking. Yeah, and yeah. and they'll look like maybe they came out of one of the kids' books that's on the shelf. When Greg paints at schools, he also talks to students about the process. It's a way for them to connect with the space. It looks complex, but for Greg, it's pretty straightforward. For 25 years, he has been a designer and illustrator, so he has the process down to a science. And believe it or not, taking a blank canvas and turning it into this sometimes only takes days. I use this, and I have the, I have the grid lines on here. So I, if you were to come here yesterday when I started, I had tape marks at all these corners. I love that you started this. You started that yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Get Monday. out. Yeah. Just yesterday, this yeah. is what. <laughs> wow. His work inspires imagination and creativity. And even though the process moves fast, the images make a lasting impression. It's just amazing for the kids to be able to come in and actually see the process and then eventually be able to see the final product and know it's their own space, it's their space. They created the name and now when they come down here, you know, to the level library or the Eagle's Nest, it's their, it's their special spot. So these wall murals range in price depending on the detail and the size. They generally start around $3,000. They've gone for as much as $26,000. Wow. I know, but a lot of work goes into those things. And they're beautiful. They really are. This week's In Focus, an elementary school library has been attracting more visitors than usual. A mural artist is there to paint a story, and our Brenda Mack has more. Look at the pictures. They're so pretty cute. What's I think I could just jump in there and just... Stroke after stroke after stroke, a sketch on the paper comes to life in Eagleville Elementary, just in a matter of days. It was really cool when I first walked in. I was really surprised at how fast he works. This is the second mural out of four planned for the library, and students come in to peek on the process every chance they get. Animals have, like, little babies for them to read to. Look at his creations. The idea was to, uh, to have animals to promote reading, uh, to make it kind of look like the illustrations out of a, a children's book. 
The blank book covers also sparked imagination and curiosity among kids. Yeah, the kids were saying, well, what book are they reading? And I thought, I kind of like it that it's left open so the kids can kind of decide. So they can see the book and wonder, oh, I wonder what the bears are reading. The idea behind this has been a decade-long plan by one teacher. And she says this is a nice finishing touch to her career. I happen to be retiring this year after 26 years. Seeing something that I like to have accomplished and to be able to accomplish that, um, I'm just very happy. I had them draw and maybe list little things they liked. The kids feel that this is part of their mural, and that was so important. The Same. teacher and says this is exactly what down. she envisioned for the students. It's going to be really fun to read and like just read in here and chill out because there's so many cool things to look at and stuff. And she's happy the knowing she company, helped yeah. foster a fun learning environment. If the mural makes them stay a little bit, makes them read a little bit more, makes them check out more books, makes this an atmosphere that makes it so welcoming for them, that's... That's its purpose. That's its purpose. In Pequot Lakes, Brenna Mack, Lakeland News. If you've enjoyed this segment of Lakeland News, please consider making a tax deductible contribution to Lakeland Public Television. To meet with the kids. So, the first stage of the project was to meet with the kids and, and get their ideas. So, we had a couple of sessions where I talked with the kids about what, what is Pure Power Art. If you explain it to me as an outsider uh, coming in, not knowing what you do. So we had some brainstorming sessions. We, they helped me generate ideas as far as words that I can go off of. Because for me, many times, to start a visual project, I start with word lists of, of things that represent. So uh, I was getting a lot of wonderful feedback. The students were really um, amazing at, at, at the input they were giving me. And I started to see how, how this program really is starting to work, work for the kids and uh, for all the kids. Um, so we, we did that, and then I put together what this program was about, uh, and then I showed uh, three, three visual concepts to the school, to the kids first, presented to the kids, and then the, then the kids in the school presented it to the whole school. As I remember, right in the school, okay. then the school <laughs> voted on which one they thought represent, best represented the whole concept that they'd want to see on the wall. Uh, so then, I, then, I, then the next stage was to paint, so I started painting. Uh, but here's where I kind of really started to learn about the project even more, uh, is having the kids. So, uh, the, it's about a beacon and being a, you know, being a light for the school and the community and that. I really got that out of the kids from learning. So that's kind of where the beacon came to. Um, and then the star part of it is, was the, the kids portion, because I wanted to have a portion of the way the kids could, could help. And that's really, I mean, the rest of the mural kind of visually represents what I think it, it is. But those stars each individually kind of show really, and I got to really see what this program is, because I worked with the kids. Uh, they were in their groups, they, were, uh, they came in and each did one, and I got to see how they, how they worked together, how they included everybody. When, when some kids were hesitant maybe to, to paint, they were very encouraging. Um, and I've worked with kids at other schools and on other projects, even adults, and many times there's, kid, there's, there's, there's leaders or there's people who really want to just kind of get things done. And I was just very taken aback at how, how the kids were so encouraging and, and they really made it their point to make sure everybody was included, uh, whether they were hesitant or not. And, to, and, to, and from the idea point, standpoint to, to getting a brush stroke or a few brush strokes in, into their star. So it was, really, it was really kind of for me, and that was kind of the point where I really kind of learned. I thought I kind of knew what the program was about, but until I was working with the kids and, and painting the mural that I really got to see how this has really affected the, the kids and the community in that. Thank you. Thank you. Finally tonight, the children's section of the Savage Public Library has a whole new look thanks to a local artist. Library attendees will get to check out the work of Greg Preslica. Greg painted a mural on two walls starting last Wednesday, and the mural is titled Take Flight and complements the learning and imagination that takes place in books. He designed bookmarks displaying the mural concept to, that were sold for $2 to help cover some of the costs for the project. That is truly a talent to be able to do something He's really good. like that. Thanks for Many watching. people come to Duluth to see the sights from the aerial lift bridge to the panoramic view from the top of Inger Tower. Others capture the scenery so people can take it with them. Katie Anderson caught up with an artist who captured the aura of Canal Park in the dark.
Most artists may prefer a studio to do their painting, but Greg Preslitka is different. I like to do some night painting, so it's beautiful down here. As he captures the scene of South Lake Avenue with every stroke of his brush, he also captures some attention. So is that the street you're looking at? Preslitka enjoys painting outdoor scenery the most, and doing it in the dark brings on an added challenge. Sometimes you, when you paint at night, you kind of it's kind of a feel. You go by the feel of you knowing where your 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 paint is because uh, the colors where they are, and you kind of go by feel, which is kind of a kind of a, a fun part of painting at night. But he has a system to help guide him. I always have my palette set up the same the same way for consistency, so it's quicker. As important as it is to pick up the brush, the key is also knowing when to put it down. Artists will tell you that they tend sometimes you tend to overwork it, so you have to know, say, okay, that's what I wanted to say with the painting, and and then you just quit. As the busy street continues to hum around him, Preslicka cleans up his palette and easel in search of his next spot to capture. In Duluth, Katie Anderson for KBJR6 and Range 11. Hope Katie got that painting. Well, that painting took Preslicka about two hours to complete. However, his specialty is mural painting. Yeah. Welcome back. The clock is ticking, and an artist from Savage is watching it closely. He's trying to paint nonstop for 24 hours. Greg Preslicka got started at 7 o'clock this yes. morning and hopes to paint 12 paintings before tomorrow morning. He spent time this afternoon in New Prague painting the depot. This painting, along with the other he's finished, will be donated to local charities so they can use them as fundraisers. That will take place next weekend along with Greg's art show at his home studio. Well, awesome stuff. We'll see you back here tonight 